as you continue to improve your game, you will have more tactical and positional ideas competing for your attention. How do you choose a move? Should you try to play a tactic, or do you need to improve your position first? Did your opponent's last move create a strong threat in the position, or should you ignore it and create an attack yourself? There are no easy answers to these questions, but the more you practice answering these questions, the better your move choices will be. Let's take a look at some positions and try to decide how to choose the best move. In this position, white has a serious advantage. White's pieces are far more active than black's, and notice that white has doubled rooks, putting pressure on f7. Black's king looks a lot weaker than white's king, and it looks like white has a crushing tactic. White plays rook takes f7 check, forcing king to h8. When you play a game of chess, it is important to think about what has changed in the position after every move. After calculating that white can win a knight by force, after king h8, white did not ask what's changed in the position after the last move, and quickly grabs black's knight with rook takes d7. By only focusing on what white could do and ignoring the opponent's ideas, what did white overlook? When black's king left the g-file, black's rook on g8 is now pointing at the g2 square, joining the queen hiding on a8. Black delivers checkmate with queen takes g2. Let's see what white should have done instead. After king h8, once white notices what has changed, what should white do? Should white immediately block the queen's threat with knight to f3? This move is good. But can you see a way for white to defend against checkmate and threaten to checkmate black? That's right, queen to h3. White protects g2 and also threatens checkmate on the next turn. By combining defense and attack, recognizing the opponent's ideas without giving up on your own ideas, white has a very strong attack against black's weakened kingside and should go on to win this game with careful play. For example, if black plays knight to f8, protecting the h7 square from checkmate, one strong idea for white is to play rook e7. Threatening to remove the guard with rook takes f8 on the next turn and deliver checkmate. Black's passive pieces, all on the back rank, are no match for white's active pieces working together. Most players prefer to attack and make threats rather than defend. When we are considering what move to make next, it's useful to ask, what move would my opponent play on the next move? White did not ask this question and only thought about white's possible moves and played queen to f3. Attacking the rook on a8 and clearing the way for g4, trying to open up lines against black's king. It's tempting for black to decide where to move the unprotected rook on a8, but why does black need to react? Does black have a stronger threat? Do you notice all the weak dark squares around white's king? Black can play the powerful queen to c3, threatening checkmate, a much stronger threat than white capturing black's rook. Notice that there is no defense to queen b2 checkmate. How could white have avoided this unfortunate end? Let's take a look at the position again. If white would have asked what moves black could play on the next turn, White would soon realize that queen to c3 is a crushing threat. And since white does not have a stronger threat to make against black, white must prevent this threat. Can you see how white can defend the weak c3 square and attack black's powerful dark squared bishop? That's right, knight to e2. And after moving the bishop to safety with bishop to g7, now white can safely play queen to f3. And after rook to c8, threatening queen c2 checkmate, white should be okay after rook to d2. Sometimes you have to find patient, defensive moves before you can start building your position to attack. Let's take a look at one more position. Not all positions have simple attacking or defensive moves that you can find. In this endgame, the material is even, but the one weakness black has is doubled pawns on the c-file. Notice if white only thinks about attacking the weak pawn on c6 with knight to e5. White forces black to make a good move 
with c5. Black's main weakness in the position, the doubled pawns, will be fixed on the next turn with c takes d4, when black will have a very solid position. What should white do instead? As the c6 pawn is a weakness, this is a clear target to attack. White should first prevent black from removing that weakness, but how can white do this? By freezing the pawn on c6 with c5. Now that white has a concrete target to attack, c6, black is in trouble. After knight to d7, trying to prevent knight to e5, white can still attack c6 with knight to b4. And after knight to b8, white overwhelms black's defenses with knight e5. White will win the c6 pawn on the next turn and have good chances to win this endgame. Now that you've looked at ways to choose a move, it's time to prove that you can find the best moves.